Hey everybody, it is Kellen Nitro for Nitro Maniac TV's Wrestling Unlimited, and in December, the NWA took you into the fire, and now in January, they give you hard times, daddy. And that was the name of the pay-per-view that ran uh, last night, January 24th, 2020, from the GPB Studios in Atlanta, Georgia. It was NWA Hard Times, or as they had it stylized, NWA Hard X Times. And um, this is my take on the pay-per-view and just my opinions on everything that ha went down and happened because it's a pretty, it was a pretty pivotal show for Billy Corgan's NWA, but also it was a pretty pivotal, uh, believe it or not, a pretty pivotal show for um, Ring of Honor as well, which was involved in this card somewhat. So let's just go through the card and, and the tournament and everything and I'll kind of lay out my thoughts as we go along here. Show opens with a pre-produced video package. I know he owns the company, but the Billy Corgan country music is a little weird. I never was really a huge Smashing Pumpkins fan growing up, but uh, a few of their songs are good, uh, especially off of, uh, I think it's Melancholy and the Infinite, in Infinite Sadness, the double album from 95 or so. Um, there's a couple of tracks on there I have on my iPod, and yes, I still use a click-wheel iPod, everybody. Uh, we go then next to the TV title, round number one, and the brackets are showing right after the open of the pay-per-view where Joe Galley and Stu Bennett welcome us to hard times. Uh, the opening contest, the question mark versus Trevor Murdoch, and that's two of the NWA's most popular athletes to open things up. The question mark's music is amazing, and Murdoch attempts to lariat the question mark, and he ends up hurting his shoulder on the attempt, and this would be a storyline throughout the evening is Trevor Murdoch's shoulder as he advanced through the tournament and on to the final. So Murdoch hits the bulldog from the top, but the question mark gets up. And so Murdoch hits a second bulldog to end the undefeated streak of the Mongrovian question mark. But his arm is hurt. And again, that's going to be a storyline that we're going to continue to pay attention to throughout the uh, entirety of the pay-per-view. So the next first round match was Zicky Dice versus Dan Moff. Interesting first round encounter. You'd expect this one uh, maybe a little bit farther on in the tournament, but uh, we have one of the fastest rising independent talents in North America versus a stalwart of early Ring of Honor. Uh, Zicky's entrance music is amazing, and Moff openly representing Ring of Honor. So the partnership is back on between Billy Corgan's NWA and Ring of Honor. And, of course, there is already a storyline going into the show with Ring of Honor versus the NWA, as we've seen in the video packages and that stuff with Nick Aldis uh, showing up on Ring of Honor TV and costing Flip Gordon matches, costing Marty Skrull matches, and so on and so forth. So um, what we had talked about in our... Meltzer Awards year in review show about something potentially happening with the NWA Ring of Honor I think is more of a definite now that it's it, there is an agreement in principle happening between the two of them. So again a hard hitting encounter and Maff gets the pin with the running scent on but Dice looked good in this match it's going to be a huge year for him and probably a huge year for Dan Moff as well too. Uh, the guy was over with the NWA crowd so expect him on more NWA cards as the year goes on and as this working agreement between Ring of Honor and NWA kind of works itself out here a little bit. The next first round contest was Matt Cross versus Ricky Starks. Uh, last time I seen Cross was at All In in 2018. Myself, uh, apparently he signed with Ring of Honor, so another Ring of Honor athlete, so he's with them now. Uh, Stark reminds me of about 1996, 1997, 98 era Rock, almost. Like, you know, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock in WWF. Matt Cross with some very innovative offense. Um, it, this match kind of reminded me of a junior heavyweight match from New Japan. Just a great contest. Uh, and Stark, for his finish, hits the stroke, but it's not the Jeff Jarrett finisher. This is more like a kind of like a Falcon Arrow that you would see, uh, kind of a PWG style Falcon Arrow, if you will, uh, for the one, two, three. And uh, so our bracket is almost set for the semifinals. The next match was to have been Tim Storm versus Ken Anderson. Storm comes out, and we get word that Ken Anderson is out. So at the moment, Storm is on a bye. It was announced earlier yesterday, uh, I'm recording this the day after, but earlier yesterday that Anderson is on his way to uh, kind of rep aces and eights on impact uh, on Mania weekend on their uh, total nonstop action kind of reunion show that they're having in conjunction with WrestleCon on Mania weekend in Tampa. So 
Uh, I'm not sure if this was a legit injury or if this was just more him being unavailable because he's doing press for that event or whatever. But ergo, storyline, he's not medically cleared to compete. Uh, Storm will take the W, says where he needed three victories, he just needs two. And uh, our semifinals are set. So it will be in the semis, uh, Tim Storm taking on Ricky Starks on one side. And then on the other side, as I look up for the winners again, it is Dan Moff versus Trevor Murdoch. So already at this point in the pay-per-view, we're jacked because there are two ballistic semifinals coming our way. And then the rest of the matches on the card. Here we go. Uh, Stu Bennett has some breaking news. Announces that in April 2020, the Crockett Cup is the next NWA pay-per-view. Uh, the NWA World Tag Team titles are up next. The Rock and Roll Express take on Wildcard, take on Eli Drake and James Storm. I think they remixed the James Storm theme from TNA. And now it's it's it's... It's a little bit heavier and a little bit of, of, of... It's better. Let's just put it that way. It's not the, the same stuff that he had with that... Uh, I think it was called... The, not the DOA, but that... You know, the, the Pursuto hacker group with him and Bram and uh, Eddie Kingston and that stuff. <laughs> In the kind of their waiting days of their impact contract a few years ago. And I, I just can't remember the, the name of it right now. But it wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't a great fit... But in NWA right now, it's a great fit for him. So uh, Ricky Morton is timeless. He chained wrestled with Drake and Thomas Latimer to start. Amazing uh, triple threat, but a real old, good old school pace to it. Uh, Camille attacked uh, Robert Gibson on the outside. So it's mostly Cowboy, James Storm, and Thomas Latimer in the ring for the bulk of the match. And they put on a, a great contest. Morton hits a Canadian Destroyer again. He goes for a second one on Royce Isaacs, but Drake intercepts Morton, hits a gravy train on him for a 1-2-3. And this is probably the best tag match we've seen in the power era of NWA. And it's up there right now with one of the best tag matches in the year. All three teams worked uh, amazing in this match. And where one team had a shortcoming, the other t two teams could f really fill in and, and cover it real nicely. Uh, I would not mind seeing a rematch between all three of these teams. Again, I think that does, that is probably something we're going to see later on down the road. Uh, I would think that all three of these teams are going to be involved in the Crockett Cup again in, in uh, 2020, uh, the next pay-per-view in April. Uh, so we'll wait and see what happens. I think I've seen online that it's pegged for... i got to look at the calendar here, but uh, April 25th was a date that I've seen uh, kind of pegged there and that makes sense April 25th is a Saturday so um, you know towards the end of the month in April uh, it's a long time between pay-per-views for the NWA but for a group that records once a month three days out of every month they could handle it for sure I uh, just I guess we're waiting for a venue confirmation now at this point so stay tuned the NWA Women's Championship was up next, where we had the challenger Thunder Rosa taking on the champion Allison K. Both these girls have pro MMA records, and it shows early as it's a very MMA style encounter. A nice brawl to the outside. Again, I got another hard hitting encounter for the notes. This is a fairly competitive match, too. A massive powerbomb to the apron by Allison K to Thunder Rosa, uh, which leads to a two count after a Yoshi Tonic by Rosa. Again, Tons of chain, chain wrestling here. If you like chain wrestling, this was a show for you because virtually everybody did it and did it very well. Uh, I have down Dark Horse Match of the Night, in my opinion. Uh, and the finish, uh, Allison Kay tries for something and her left shoulder goes into the post and Rosa goes for an armbar. Kay powers out. And right when Allison was trying to set up for, I guess, another tombstone pile to the driver attempt or something, uh, Rosa catches her in a Thunder Driver 1 2 3, and we got a brand new women's champion. It is Thunder Rosa. And post match, Molina and Marty Bell hit the ring and embrace Rosa. They finally have control of the NWA women's title, so that's a major uh, storyline point. Just bam, slammed right in their face here on this show. And. Uh, yeah, again, we have a brand new NWA Women's Champion. We see a hype video playing up the Skrull Aldous feud and more hype for the Flip Gordon oh, Flip Gordon uh, more hype for the Flip Gordon Nick Aldous match later tonight and Joel Galley interviews Marty Skrull. Uh Skrull says he's here to get a shot at the NWA title and he's still waiting for his answer from uh, Nick Aldous. 
Aldis walks out, says he will put the belt on the line against Gordon if Aldis wins. All the business with Ring of Honor and Marty Scroll in, I guess, setting up this rematch for the NWA title is on Nick's terms. Scroll has to leave the building for the match. And so Skrull agrees to it and is escorted out immediately by security, which means that uh, it virtually guarantees that there will be no villain enterprises uh, interference during the main event as well. And then it's later decreed that the NWA will ban strictly business, all this is faction, uh, from being ringside as well so it's going to be one-on-one -on -one later on for the nwa title flip gordon versus nick aldis semi-final time in the television tournament dan moff versus trevor murdoch this was a big hoss fight uh massive spear by dan moff to open uh top rope bulldog by murdoch though gets the free count again all these matches in the quarter and the semifinals had the six minute and five second time limit uh adhere to it it's like wrestling and express i love that and from what it sounds like, they're going to keep that time limit going uh, forward with the exception of major pay-per-views that that belt is on where they'll be pulling the time limit much like they did in the finals tonight. So Murdoch goes through to the finals. The next semi, a fresh Tim Storm taking on Ricky Starks. Storm fresh off the bye in round one. Storm with a number of near falls open. Uh, and again... Just all Tim Storm to begin with. He hits the perfect Storm finisher, but rolls off of Starks before the pin could be counted. That was costly, where Starks hits the crucifix for free. And our NWA television title final will be Ricky Starks versus Trevor Murdoch at the end of the pay-per-view in the main event spot. NWA national title on the line next, and this was a weird matchup. We had Aaron Stevens take on Scott Steiner, and it's explained that Steiner got the title shot as part of the deal brokered with Strictly Business. A few weeks ago, he was a mystery partner uh, of Strictly Business in the tag team title, or in the six-man tag match that ended up getting Ricky Morton the shot at the NWA uh, championship. So... And, of course, Stevens is accompanied to the ring by the question mark, his sensei. Uh, I laughed at the Kill Bill-themed attire for the question mark. Uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, some comedic spots to start. Both guys can talk in the ring. Uh, Steiner goes for the Steiner recliner, but the question mark interferes for the DQ. Steiner then puts the question mark in the recliner while Stevens hightails it with the belt out of the building. Uh, other than getting... This was... Probably the worst match of the night on the card, but it got Stevens and Question Mark over again with their axe in the crowd. And, uh, you know, Scott Steiner is Scott Steiner and was a heavy crowd favorite here. So, uh, you know, everybody got what they wanted out of that one. It was just, you know, what would you expect with Scott Steiner in 2020? So, a NWA World's Heavyweight title match was up next between the champ Nick Aldis and the challenger Flip Gordon. And, of course, uh, talked about the NWA board banning strictly business from ringside, so it's one on one. The crowd is split 50 50, and they were actually shouting insults at each other during this match. So it could be something with this Ring of Honor NWA feud if they uh, market it and they promote it correctly here. So something to watch for in 2020. Um, you know, with those two promotions not necessarily teaming up, but doing if there's one thing Ring of Honor can do well and has proven it can do well in its past history. It's promotion wars. Think back to 2006, 2007 with the war with CZW and then later on down the line with New Japan Pro Wrestling and so on and so forth. So this was a great smaller athlete, larger athlete contest. Uh, Flip got a two count with a moonsault and then later on two star spangled stunner attempts and only a two count for Flip. And then Flip tries for another high flying maneuver, almost like a monkey flip into a small package in the corner. But all this counters with his own kind of just counter maneuver into a small package, which favored him. Uh, one, two, three, and all this retains the NWA title. So in the ongoing negotiations for this title rematch, I guess, between Skrull and all this, Nick all this will call all the shots. It will be on his terms, probably at a NWA event now. Uh, so any rumor of the NWA title potentially being... Skull, uh, Skrull and Aldis as part of the Supercard, I would think, would be probably out the window in April. But you never know. We'll see what happens. The NWA television title finals. Again, Trevor Murdoch taking on Ricky Starks. Uh, again, a kind of dark horse final. No time limit. 
uh, a big boot from Murdoch to start. This match started hot. And then Starks gets flipped to the outside by Murdoch and lands face first on the uh, the concrete or the studio floor. And you could just hear his nose just like that. So I think he may have legit broke his nose landing on his face. Uh, it was a sick looking bump regardless. Uh, but Starks fights back even with whatever impediment on his face with the nose and whatever. And gets the one 2 free again via the Falcon Arrow, the stroke. And is your new... NWA television champion, which I think is a no-brainer. I think Ricky Starks is probably the best mid-card wrestler that they have on that roster, and he's a young talent. That title is going to elevate young talent, especially with the unique nature of the 605 time limit in each match, and um, he's very charismatic, like I said, so an excellent choice. And Trevor Murdoch's over with the crowd, too, so you could have Murdoch potentially challenge for the national belt now with Aaron Stevens and get in a awesome little feud because he beat the question mark now going forward. So looking forward to that. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, the runtime on this is a tidy two hours and 30 minutes. So if you're looking for a quick watch this weekend, that's not WWE related at all. That's not, you know, NXT or the rumble or anything like that. This will only take two hours and 30 minutes of your time and it goes by fast. So it's a, it's a, it's a great watch from front to back and it's entertaining as all get out. So, uh, I'm going to give it a 8 out of 10 and a must watch again because it was great. Uh, enjoyed fight having the on demand ready for me as I wasn't able to watch this live, but I was able to watch this a few hours after it had aired. And, uh, you know, that's a, a great service fight, TV. I'm, I'm starting to really enjoy it. So, anyways, later days. Happy wrestling watching, folks. I'm Kellen Nitro. We'll see you next time on Nitro Maniac TV's Wrestling Unlimited. Take care.